government officials conducting an extensive tour of capital projects undertaken by the government on Grand Bahama. A wave of opportunities available in the maritime sector. Crawfish lovers beware. The crawfish season in the Bahamas is about to close. This is the Bahamas Tonight, the Northern Edition. Good evening. I'm Sabrina Brown. Thank you for joining us. Over the past five years, the Progressive Liberal Party government has been working to establish major infrastructural and capital works projects on Grand Bahama. Tonight, we take a look at some of those projects and the massive investment made by the government. The government has invested $104 million in capital works projects around Grand Bahama. The Minister for Grand Bahama, Dr. Michael Darville, leading a delegation of department heads on an extensive tour of the various projects in Freeport and East End. The government fulfilling a multi-million dollar promise to construct a new state-of-the-art fire station on the island, a $6.2 million investment. The government and the Grand Bahama Port Authority have joined forces to construct a $28 million community clinic in Freeport on some 50 acres of land near the Lucaya Circle. We have been working for the last five years. We have done a lot of capital works projects. Yes, we had Hurricane Matthew. The economy has been affected. Yes, we are creating jobs in the, uh, in the construction industry. But ultimately, it's to demonstrate that for the first time uh, in the history, the government has now put uh, in place major capital works projects on the island of Grand Bahama. And once we uh, break ground on the new Freeport Community Clinic, it would have taken the government uh, agenda to uh, in excess of $100 million worth of capital works projects that are committed for the island of Grand Bahama. The delegation also getting a first-hand view of a multi-million dollar upgrade at the Rand Memorial Hospital. The community of Smith's Point is being transformed with the construction of a seawall. The government is investing over $4 million to address the age-old problem of coastal erosion in that area. You will see all of the cranes are way down uh, below uh, the, the, the road line, and they're going there now to necessarily connect the steel and the pour the platform into the bedrock and then come from the ground all the way up to create the, the seawall. But one of the things that we put in the design was to extend the road which will give the road passage be wider. And so when you're doing any sort of festivals, the residents of Smith Point now will be able to put tents along the road. It's going to be a beautiful site. A storage facility for customs and immigration was constructed at a cost of $1.2 million. $500,000 was invested in a massive renovation project at the farmer's market downtown. In East End, a 62-acre well field has been established to provide residents with potable water, an investment of $1.3 million. It's a huge uh, undertaking, and we are so pleased that we are in the final stages of phase two, a total investment of about $1.35 million. And it's important because the residents in East Grand Bahama has been tackling with this vexing problem for many years. One of the good things is a lot of our natural water reserves are in the east, and so even though they had wells, when the power would go out, they would not be able to access potable water. The minister also plans to lead a delegation on a tour of major government projects underway in West Grand Bahama. 
One of the fastest growing industries holding great promise in 2017, as the government touts a successful private-public partnership with the Grand Bahama Shipyard, a leading trainer in the maritime sector on Grand Bahama is calling for more Bahamians to join their ranks. Joan Davis Roll reports. The Bahamas is ranked high among the leaders in the maritime industry. When it comes to job opportunities in the maritime sector, like the seas these professional seamen ply, the number of jobs are said to be endless. One of the foremost certified trainers in the maritime sector here on Grand Bahama, Clayton Curtis, says the Bahamas' ranking globally augurs well, not only for Bahamians, but the country's overall economy. The Bahamas presently stands in the top five countries in the world in ship registration. The amount of revenue that the Bahamas government derives is directly related to the size of that vessel. And as the Bahamas stands in the top five in the world with ship registration, that means the government stands to generate a considerable amount of revenue. The Allen of Grand Bahama, Curtis noted, is a site of leading ship care and repair facilities in the region. Like these spin-off industries, he further outlined the gamut of jobs available in the maritime sector. We, as the, one of the top five ship registration countries in the world, on those ships that fly the Bahamas flag, I am saying with some degree of confidence that there are literally hundreds of jobs out there on Bahamian registered vessels. Should you mothers cut the navel string and not the apron string when you let your sons go? We have globally in the entire shipping industry close to 30,000 jobs that could solve the unemployment crisis in several countries. Bahamians have a distinct advantage to take advantage of those jobs. For this veteran seaman, the goal is to see more Bahamians charting a new course and taking over the helm of mega vessels. He says the maritime sector is no longer a man's world, and if you are a woman looking to pull up anchor and sail the high seas, you can also expect to do so while earning top dollar. We have a young Bahamian female out of Nassau who is still under the age of 30, who came through our maritime cadet program, received training in marine engineering at a school in Canada where we send our students, and through her persistence, will soon be certified as a, a chief engineer who will be authorized to work on any size vessel afloat anywhere in the world. And by the way, she'll be making about $80,000 only working six months out of the year. Joan Davis Roll, ZNS Network News. Thank you, Joan. Independent candidate for Central Grand Bahama, Donald Mortimer, officially launched his platform today. Italia Hall has the details. Independent candidate for Central Grand Bahama, Donald Mortimer, says he believes that Central Grand Bahama deserves better representation, and he also believes he will be able to make a difference in that constituency. He says his primary focus is the youth. The main thing is jobs. And the other thing in there to build young people by having um, parks and trying to tell them or teach them the way forward about what we should be doing, what is the right thing to do, and making it better in Central. I would be going for myself. I'm not, I may, not, may or may not be able to see everyone because sometimes people don't be home, but the platform will be left in their door. Much more believes his support within the community is building. They want someone who can... What I've seen, people want someone who can speak. You don't, you don't hesitate, don't have to be, not to be afraid to speak when there's a time to speak. And when you have the facts, speak. And that's what I'm all about. He is encouraging all Bahamians to register to vote. Especially Central, where, I'm, where I have the privilege to be the candidate at this time. Um, I want all of them to come out and get registered. That's the only way we can make a difference. And so I urge them to come and get registered, go, go today, not tomorrow. And... Uh, the only way different can, changes can come, you can register to make that change. Italia Hall, ZNS Network News. Photo registration is underway outside the Bahamas as the countdown to the general election continues. Kimberly Mullings has that story. 
The Parliamentary Registration Department has provisions in place to include Bahamian students studying abroad and in the region. Parliamentary Commissioner Sherlyn Hall says the process continues for students at various foreign outlets and offices and in Jamaica and the Barbados for students at the University of the West Indies. Students are also being encouraged to arrange appointments. In addition to the regular voter registration requirements, they must also show proof of enrollment in a program and have in their possession a valid F-1 visa and I-20 document. Bahamian students are also required to complete additional documents to vote outside the Bahamas. We can also tell you that international observers have been invited to view the upcoming general election. The Ministry of Foreign Affairs says the Bahamas has invited observers from four organizations or nations. The observers will represent the Caribbean community, CARICOM, the Commonwealth of Nations, the Organization of American States, and the United States of America. Now the collection of voters' cards at the various outlets in the community have been extended, and persons can continue to collect those documents from the various designated centers. Kimberly Mullings, ZNS Network News. Stay with us as more news after this.